Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Are we all set? I uh, would make sure that everybody uh, that has come is signed in, please. And again, we uh, invite you. Uh, uh, thanks for coming to this uh, uh, little uh, public hearing of um, the proposed Summer Ave Local Historic District. Uh, I'd like to uh, call this meeting to order. I would like to ask, are there any other meeting representatives here that have to call their meetings to order? Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Um, I'd like to make some introductions of the people here. Um, we have Virginia Adams as a board member. We have Priscilla Pola as a board member. Eileen Bornstein as a, pole, as a uh, board member. Um, Alyssa Scaparotti is not here, um, traveling with her family. Uh, we have Kim Saunders as a recording secretary over here. And my wife, uh, Ginny Oblodgett, on the computer. And I'm Everett Oblodgett, chairman of the West Street Historic District and uh, the proposing study committee for the proposed uh, Summer Ave Local Historic District. Um, the purpose of tonight is to inform the residents and public of the procedures of operation of the proposed Summer Ave Local Historic District by the West Street Historic District Commission and Study Committee. As directed by the Massachusetts Historical Commission Chapter 40C and the bylaw of Reading Mass Article 7.3 Local Historic District. Um, we will do this presentation by first uh, presenting a short PowerPoint um, with some additional narration as it moves through, through the uh, procedures. Uh, you'll have the opt to read the slides and uh, hear some additional narration about each one. Um, and different people will present different parts of that. We will then have a question and answer or comment session. Um, at that time, I would ask you to state your name and address. And um, we'll rotate until everybody's had a chance to ask one question. And then you can go, after everybody's had a chance, you can have two. <laughs> and we'll proceed that way. It seems like that's the other uh, thing that we'd be doing. Um, the topics for tonight's discussion will be um, the history and significance of the proposed district, history of local historic districts, description of the boundaries, integrity of the resources and the challenges, options for protecting the Summer Ave Local Historic District, how, to, uh, how a local historic district works, what is, uh, what is reviewed in a local historic district, um, benefits of the local historic district, and then comments, questions, etc. Okay. You're on. Virginia Adams. With the passage of the local historic district bylaw and the establishment of the West Street Historic District almost 10 years ago, it was anticipated that other di districts would gradually be created to help protect the town's character and defining structures and neighborhoods. Now under study and consideration is the establishment of the Summer Avenue Local Historic District. As proposed, the Summer Avenue Local Historic District will recognize a residential neighborhood of prominent homes, most of which were built in the mid to late 1800s by well-to-do Boston-based merchants who desired to live outside the city and chose to reside in Reading. Even in the early 1900s, the area continued to draw prominent figures to Summer Ave. Robert Father Kemp returned to Reading and had a second empire house, number 199, uh, redesigned into a Tudor uh, revival style by Reading architect Horace Wadlin. In 1926, a home was built for and occupied by the Lieutenant Governor of Massachusetts. The variety of homes that were built reflects the wealth and prominence of the owners. Five structures are recognized as National Register properties, and many are on the town's historic and architectural inventory. Only a few contemporary houses have been built where larger lots were subdivided. Summer Avenue is considered an intact neighborhood where homes are well set back on deep lots that reflect an attractive tree-lined streetscape worthy of the added recognition and protection that a local historic district can provide. 
Priscilla. <clears throat> Over 120 cities and towns in Massachusetts have recognized the value of historic districts and have established one or more districts within their communities. All are formed under the Mass General Law, Chapter 4OC. Nearby communities have local historic districts, include Andover, Melrose, Woburn, Lexington, Concord, and Swampscott. Reading established its first local historic district in 2005 when town meeting approved a bylaw creating the West Street Historic District to oversee a portion of West Street. With the establishment of Summer Avenue Historic District, Reading will be able to offer greater preservation protection to additional properties. This is a map of the proposed district. It starts at the corner of Summer Avenue and Woburn Street and ends on the north side of Glen Road so that the district could include the home of 146 Summer Avenue, known as Westeria Lodge. I read. The master plan of the town for Reading states the character and identity of the community preserved up to today is potentially threatened by changes within the existing fabric. Changes driven by forces outside the realm of the town's influence and sustained by the regional housing crisis. The human friendly balance among building size, lot size, and natural elements that exist throughout the town is put to test by factors external to Reading, thus threatening the sense of distinctiveness maintained throughout the years. Of the 25 properties included in the proposed district, 10 of them are on the town's historical and architectural inventory, and five are recognized as historic register properties nationally recognized. I'm kidding you on. No, I guess it's me. Okay. Um, Eileen just mentioned the town's inventory in the National Register. The National Register designation is just an honor and places no restrictions um, or protection on the property. I think it's very important that you hear, hear that. There are no restrictions on a National Register property. And there are five in the district. Inclusion in the town in, town's inventory means that the Historical Commission may impose a six month demolition delay, but that does not prevent demolition. The overarching benefit of a local historic district is the protection of significant buildings from inappropriate alteration or demolition. For over 50 years, local historic districts had offered residents, homeowners, the business own and business owners, the opportunity to protect their treasured communities from destruction. Sorry. It's almost like musical chairs. <laughs> <laughs> there are, there's one more seat up here if anybody's interested. Um, the guidelines on establishing local historic districts from the Massachusetts Historical Commission require specific actions for the implementation of a district. According to the, their guidelines, if a local historic district is already established in a community, then the commission which oversees that uh, district uh, may act as the study committee. And therefore, the West Street Historic District agreed to take on the task. We identified the boundaries for the new district and submitted the preliminary report to the Massachusetts Historical Commission and to the Community Planning and Development Commission. The report was reviewed by Mass Historical at its October 8th meeting and voted, quote, 
encouraged the town of Reading to establish the Summer Avenue Local Historic District, end of quote. That preliminary report is available on the town website and at the Community Planning and Development Department at Town Hall. A survey was sent out to the property owners with the results being sent to, the, to our group, the West Street Historic District, um, and also an, an informational letter which was followed by a question and answer session that was held on September 17th. The survey results and comments showed an overwhelming support for the establishment of the proposed district. At least 60 days after that preliminary report was submitted to Mass Historical, a hearing for public input is required, and that's tonight's meeting. As you can see, the next steps include writing the final report, uh, the town meetings vote, and the submission to the Attorney General's office for review. The same bylaw that created the West Street Historic District will be used for the Summer Ave Local Historic District. That is the reason that we were able to expedite the procedures with such efficiency. It has worked. Worked for almost 10 years. We feel it's very confident and it covers the bases very well. Um, we did not want to reinvent the wheel. Um, it just it took 18 months to do it before and we would be at the same point. What this means is that there is an extra step for the homeowners in that district. Um, they complete an application and submit it to the commission and there are three possible outcomes. A certificate of non-applicability, a certificate of appropriateness, or disapproval. I would like to point up here, this does not stop the fact that they still have to get past the building inspector. They still have to meet all the town requirements. This is just one more step at the beginning, okay? Uh, let me explain that further. The commission determines whether the work is subject to review. There is a long list of things which are exclusions, exemptions. Uh, you see some of them listed on the board, okay? Such as outdoor furniture, mechanical and plum plumbing vents, solar panels, and as I said, more on the board. It's just a very large number. Again, it does not mean they do not have to get permission from the board, but it's more like a quickie. It's on our list. Yes, you can go ahead and do it, okay? Um, exclusions from review. Uh, buildings that are less than 70 years old, and there are a few in this district, are exempt from review except when more than 25% of a facade, that's a face that faces the public right away, is going to be changed. Uh, somebody comes in and says, oh, all the windows, I want to change them. Well, that, if that exceeds 25% of the facade, then we get control on it. If it's under 25% and they're under 70 years old, we consider them a teenager and still maturing. I'm not sure what that means, okay? Um, and then uh, additions visible from a public way, uh, increasing the size of the building by more than 25% are also subject to review, okay? Um, certificate of appropriateness. After reviewing the project, the commission can decide, due to the size and scope of the project, whether a public review is required. The commission may impose certain conditions or limitations, require architectural or plan modifications. This is really the neighbors telling them what they like and don't like. It's a control by yourselves to say, this is what you can do or can't do. I want my input on it, just like you have input on this proposal. Um, somebody that's uh, in the district, if the project is too large, uh, more than 25%, let's say, then there is a required public review to give your input, okay? Disapproval. If the commission determines that the project is inappropriate, they can disapprove the project. The, by, the bylaw provides for a public appeal, okay? I 
I think you're up. Yeah. I just had to take some of the pressure off on me. <laughs> um, the local historic districts do not prevent all changes from occurring. The intent is to guide appropriate changes and additions through a local decision-making process. The purpose of a local historic district is not to halt growth, but to allow for thoughtful consideration of change. Local historic districts protect historic resources without creating a static museum environment. Tonight's public hearing is one of the last steps required before town meeting takes up the subject article under Article 9. Local historic districts, this is a quote, local historic districts are about making sure our historic built environment remains a viable part of the community. That protection is accomplished through the local democratic process of town meeting. A two-thirds majority vote will be needed for passage. Um, that concludes our presentation. We are going to open the floor. We strongly encourage you to ask questions and hope that you get answers that are useful to you. And we strongly encourage you to make comments that see fit for how you feel about this going into the, the area, the proposed area. Are there questions or comments? Yes, sir. How did you decide? Um, to I'd ask for name and address, please. Oh, okay. uh, Jack Williams, uh, 46 Summer Ave. How did you decide on the boundaries of the historic district? Um, I would point out that basically about 10 years ago began the conversation of wanting to do other districts, but having just been through 18 months to two years of prepping, um, I don't think any of us were ready to pick up that torch at that particular time. And it just hasn't happened. When we started to look and there was, there was concern, most of the time, according to the Massachusetts uh, Historical Commission, when a problem arises, and there is concern by neighbors, that's when the pressure starts to come in, and that's when most of the historic districts are created. Okay? Um, I think we all, have, we tried very hard to represent what the district really wanted. We looked at it in terms of what size do we feel we could handle. We're a relatively small board. Um, what's the prominence of that area? There are two other districts in town. There's the Con uh, downtown Reading Common District, but it is not a local historic district. It's a national register. And there is one on Woburn Street, basically up toward the area that we're talking about. We didn't feel we could take them on, so what we did is we took what we considered the pristine neighborhood and said we can deal with this as a start. Okay, does that answer your question? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, I need a name, please. Tough question. Um, no, it does not prevent it. We talk about the, the study committee and what a local historic district does is it protects the architecture, the ambiance, the aesthetics of that neighborhood. It does not protect what goes on inside the buildings, who owns them, and the use of those buildings. So therefore, they would be able to still own. That's not in the question at all. And they, they wouldn't have to conform to uh, any of the setbacks or square footage? Um, again, because of the local. Yeah, it's, it's really going to be a town council because we're right tight on the line as to they have a um, demolition delay that goes until January 24th. There is not a local historic district there now. So if it goes in now, town council, I'm sure it's going to have some opinions, some legal opinions on it. But we certainly are, feel comfortable that it might 
and saying that we might get control on the architecture, the size, setback, a lot of the issues that we have concern about, okay? Demolition, okay? I would point up, this is an excellent place to point it up, that the current application they have is for permanent demolition or partial demolition at this point. So maybe what they're saying is very good, and they say we're only going to partially destroy it, but if we don't get this district in there, there's no control at all. Okay. Is that all right? Anybody have any further comments? Other questions? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Camille Anthony, 26 Orchard Park Drive. So let's not think about 186 right now, but uh, if the district goes in, uh, let's say another house comes up and this issue arises because the district will already have been in place. How would there be any impact from the district as far as the demolition delay and um, the possibility of uh, demolition? Again, town council and state law and stuff like that with the over amendment is still subject to some interpretation. But our interpretation is that your best protection is to put a local historic district in and we have a demolition that we can say we disapprove and they can't do it. Uh, the way it works is if they put an application into us, they can't move anywhere else in the town in terms of the building inspect uh, inspector, et cetera, until they're cleared off an our pallet, off an our plate. Um, that's about as strong as I think I can make it right now. Yes, sir. Fausto Garcia, 15 California Road. Um, Looking at the history that you've had with the West Street District, uh, can you bring up, uh, I guess, a, a case where uh, you know something was brought before you and you had a disapproval and what the final outcome was? I don't think we've had a disapproval. Yeah, we had one, one disapproval. That was the roofing material. Oh yes. Um, we have had one disapproval. <laughs> uh, selection of type of roofing material. Um, basically a house that was more than 70 years old wanted to put up a, what I would call a modern new metallic roof and it didn't fit the style of the house and they're working on finding something else. It's, the commission works very hard to negotiate, well these are more, more than just your current options. You know, why are you thinking here when you're thinking weight factors and stuff like that on a roof and stuff? So we try to negotiate with them what are some other possibilities. But there was one. Uh, over nine or so years, I think that's kind of reasonable. I would point out that I've been on that for about three years now. Um, I was on the original team along with Virginia Adams that set up. We spent the year and a half or two years. Um, that's been a good working system up there. Basically, when West Street was uh, basically considered for that, we had Archstone coming on at one end and the other places proposed at the other end, and lots of traffic, and Sally Hoyt, along with a couple of other people, I think probably did a lot of work to get a lot of the trucks off in it. Uh, since then, the uh, state uh, is going to redo that street, you know, if you want to go up there and watch the water main go in, <laughs> enjoy it. Um, those people have been very supportive. In fact, you're up there now and there are half a dozen or more, 10 signs up there for the proposal for this district. Well, that's a good endorsement uh, as far as I'm concerned. That's probably about the strongest endorsement you could get. Um, yeah, there's always the person that says, geez, Everett, you know, um, whatever. But in the wrong run, it's water off my duck's back. Um, because basically that's what the ruling is. And uh, so they've been, Pretty good. They've been very good, actually. Okay. Other questions? Charlene Reynolds Santo, 46 Wakefield Street. I was wondering if you could give some examples of <coughs> what types of things people have tried to do that you've approved or disapproved or had them change, just to give everyone an idea on what impact it might have on the summer out. Yeah. Uh, first of all, my book, since I started, is, is about 90 applications that have come through. So you're talking about 10 a year. 
Um, well, probably a little more than that if it's just my involvement. Um, an under 70 year old house which had energy efficient windows. Uh, they went down in 30 years and had to replace them all. Well, first the question of about the amount of facade on that house. Well, the actual windows don't cover, even though it's a five bay house, uh, three, four, five windows and a door in the front, they all got changed and they had some wonderful discussion about that. Um, we did have a demolition in the district. We had a shed, a fairly large shed, more like a business shed from probably 40, 50 years ago. It was in terrible shape, came before us and got permission to take it down. It was no problem at all. Um, fences, um, probably have been one of the more prom roofs and fences. Uh, most of the roofs are just more like a maintenance type thing and they just roll right in with the same type of roofing material. Although there has been a change because uh, three tab shingles are not um, allowable by state law anymore as I understand it because of the winds. So architects are in now. Um, we were having trouble with architects at the first, but uh, now they're, they have to be the ones that are in. Um, fences are particularly unique because they can vary in material, they can vary in height, they can vary in position. Um, uh, on a rebuild of the McKinley House up there, uh, 240 West Street, um, I believe it's 240. Um, six foot stockade, white fence, all along the whole edge of the sidewalk on the street. You now go by and you see the house and uh, they've reduced the size of the fence on the side and uh, we tend to push, uh, we don't push plastic. <laughs> uh, we push wood and iron and um, it's gone well. Again, the two major things are roofs and fences, okay? Although sheds have become very popular. We have too much stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Ever, uh, Jonathan Barnes, 41 Pratt Street. You mentioned that, that there is an appeal process. Um, can you describe a little bit of that appeal process? And is that appeal process stated in our local regulations or bylaw, or is it stated in the state law? If you know. Jenny. <laughs> um, actually, it is written in the bylaw that the place that you can go is uh, through, I believe it's MAPC, is the uh, hearing authority and you can uh, argue your case for them, they're the arbitrators. So, but we haven't ever gotten anywhere near that point, fortunately. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. There's a list of um, things that we But you have another question. Uh, somebody else, other questions? Yes, sir. Justin, uh, what can you mind up from 62 Summer Avenue? Does the current zoning for Summer Ave allow for uh, commercial use of that property? The current zoning? <laughs> no. No. It's residential. It's, it's a residential neighborhood. Um, for those people who have heard it, the Dover Amendment allows 501c3 nonprofits to go in under an educational or a religious reason. And the limitations become substantially less than the town rules, regs, bylaws, etc. So it, there is no business in that district, but it's the it's the nonprofit, it's the 501c3, and it's the religious and um, educational reasons that might present substantial issues. In this case and in others. Okay. I told my wife the other day that uh, these problems arise kind of like all of a sudden. And it's very easy to, for us to point the finger. In fact, I said to somebody else, don't point the finger too hard. Three come right back at you, you know. And uh, I, somebody was really tacking me down about why haven't these gone in before this to protect us. And um, I just said, I don't fix my plumbing until the pipes are leaking. That's the way it works. Uh, um, and I think this is substantially that type of reason. Yes, sir, Mr. Lamb. Uh, Jerry Lamb, 194 Summer Avenue. I'm just following up on your comment because one of the, I'm for the, I'm living in the district and I'm for the, the district. And it's been a real education for me and pretty much half the town I talk to because when we discuss this topic, 
half the people I talk to in town say, oh no, those are historic homes. They can't do anything there. You know, people really don't understand. And in the presentation, you showed the three le levels, <coughs> calls it out. And, and I think the passing of this district is going to just reinforce half the people's common knowledge of the town. So. And I do think it's going to set it up for other places around town, too. Um, I don't. And I think there's a wide variety of different types of neighborhoods. This just happens to be one that really catches a lot of people's eyes. But there's a lot of developments that are built of certain, by certain builders, certain characteristics, uh, certain periods of time. And I think there's a lot of variety in there, a lot of reasons to put it, look at other neighborhoods. Yes? Um, Angela Benda, Orchard Park Drive, and town meeting member for Precinct 5. Um, I have one question and some comments. The West Street Historical District sponsoring this, but should this pass, will you administer it or will it be administered by its own board made up of probably property owners on somewhere else? Um, it will be administered by the current West Street Historic District uh, Commission. Um, I think that's probably a good thing. Um, I'm just putting in some commentary here because we already had the experience of working with the bylaw, and if you had two teams working off the same bylaw, you'd get different interpretations. I think that might not be quite as comfortable. Um, the other thing is that there's a want to rename the commission, you know, Reading's Historic Districts Commission instead of the West Street Historic District, because it is going to be under the umbrella. The, the West Street District has about 66, 67, uh, and one behind the structures uh, that we're still working on, uh, 67, 68 structures. Um, and this one will have about 25 properties on it. So it's, again, it's a, it's a substantial pickup for us. And, and we're looking for um, associate members and people that want to move into here and start to learn. It's eye-opening, so unbelievable. The, the, some of the benefits you get and some of the knowledge that you gain. Uh, Having Ginny Adams just for vocabulary alone is just unbelievable. Uh, Good and, vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, not at me anyway. So, um, so I think that it will be under the West Street Historic District. Okay, so so, the, but you're always looking for new members and membership changes, so there would be opportunity for someone from Summer Ave to be on it. Definitely. Um, that was my question. I have a, a few. Um, comments about how this has transpired and what's gone on. Um, I think that you said that you're always looking and there's never time other places. I think that what has transpired in the past six months or so um, has been, and this, and the possibility of these houses being under this uh, local historic district has really transpired in a very different way from other historic preservation efforts in town. Um, two very common complaints with preservation efforts that are made in Reading and in other places are, um, num number one, that somebody else is trying to impose something upon my property, that the historical district, the do-gooders, you know, the preservationists are trying to impose something upon me without my, my say in it. And I think that um, what has gone on here is very different. It is the neighborhood very much um, has initiated this, or in part initiated this. And so it's not other people imposing something upon this neighborhood, but it's a neighborhood that is looking for protection. And so I think that that's a very good thing. I think that, you know, for the people who are afraid of the historic preservationists imposing something on people who might not want it, this is a very different thing, that, it, that you have people who are saying, we're looking for protection, and this is a way to gain protection. Um, the other complaint, criticism that people make about historic preservation efforts is that, um, they cause financial burden to people. Um, others, by their actions, are causing uh, homeowners financial burden. And I've, I've been doing a lot of research on historic districts and uh, have the 
issue of May 2007, Boston Magazine, and I read it again, and I was kind of interested because Summer Ave is named as one of the best streets to live on, and it was actually a survey that was done um, by um, uh, real estate agents who were named these, and I've done a lot of research, and if people want to look at my research, they can, but what, what I found was that um, neighborhood historic designations actually um, preserve property values. They raise property values. So people are afraid that if you get this designation that it somehow hinders you. It will cause your property to be devalued. It will cause your property to be not able to be sold. And, and everything, um, you know, historic neighborhoods help ensure that the aspects that make the area attractive to home buyers will be protected over time by explicit design limits, and, and such things as demolitions and out of character exterior, exterior remodeling. So all of the research that I've done actually shows that local historic districts, which are the oldest protection, as I've been reading, I mean, go back to the 20s, local historic, are the, uh, the most powerful and the most um, protective they actually preserve property values as opposed to decreasing or harming property values. So I know that you know you might be in some senses here, not everybody, but preaching to the converted already. I think you have a different threshold to reach when you go to town meeting. And so I think it's important to note to all of those town meeting members who say, I don't want other people telling me what to do, that it's really important to note that this is mostly the neighbors who are looking for protection. They're looking for protection for their home's values, their neighborhood, their historic neighborhood, and their property values. And they are asking this. They have, they have set this up. And that it does not, in fact, all the studies that I've, shown, I've read do not, in fact, harm property values, but enhance property values. So I think that when you go to town meeting, those are important things that should be noted. And I, um, I completely support the neighbors' efforts to preserve um, their neighborhood, and I completely support your efforts, and I will do whatever I can to make sure that this passes to town meeting. Thank you. Thank you and hear, hear. Okay. Um, I would point out that the survey was overwhelming, and I mean overwhelming, to do this. And the, the uh, West Street Historic District, I went to them and asked, 500 folks, they, they didn't bat an eyelash of uh, doing all the work. And I would point out that there have been a ton of people, lots of people that have written and helped and questioned and answered and listened to the dry runs and all that sort of stuff to make that skip even to this point. Uh, yeah, we're getting along, but the next two or three things are big issues. You know, town meeting has to be two thirds or it's gone, you know? And um, so the, the commission up here is not on the, on the fence. <laughs> the commission here is here sponsoring that, that, like, that warrant article because it feels that's the right way to move by a long shot. Question, sir. shows that property values within local historic districts do increase and the resale values of those properties increase and by implication the tax base of the town increases that's a much better scenario than if uh, as you suggest this could happen elsewhere as well if one or two or more nonprofits come in and shed the tax burden that the properties they take uh, clearly it's in the benefit of the town to pass this historic district to protect the tax base from uh, shrinking. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, have you polled each of Stephen Cool 107 Prospect? Thank you. Have you polled each of the homeowners uh, in the proposed district? And if so, what's the tally, pro and uh, con? Um, yes. Well, there's 25 properties in the district. Um, that necessarily all, some are vacant lots, 
one is a vacant lot, you know, stuff like that. It's a little tough to count buildings and properties and stuff like that. The survey that went out um, gave the, the homeowner two options. They could return a hard copy, okay? They also had the option of signing or not signing, uh, or they could reply email. Therefore, we would know where, probably know where it was coming from unless they were some teenager that could hide their email or something that I don't know how to do. Um, there, was, there was one property that was against it. Okay. So and uh, there were two other properties that were questioning how much work was it going to have to be for them. And that's, that's a valid concern um, to some. Uh, in essence, what I, I keep saying is it's one more step. But that step is probably substantially smaller and opens up a lot of channels as to other options that might be available before you <coughs> move on to possibly building inspector, zoning, whatever the case might be. So okay. it, they, they were pulled. That's part of our requirements. We had a lot of steps along the way we had to do. And, um, and keep, in case I negate to say a thank you to the people that have helped along the way. Um, small crew here would have a tough time rolling this through in this amount of time. But it has been, a, it has been done to this point. We think we've met all the steps. Uh, town meeting, which we have to prep the, re, the final report for. And then we have to get a lot of things ready for um, submission to the Attorney General Office, which includes plot plans or maps and stuff like that. Uh, we haven't got all the answers on some of those things done yet. Um, then it goes to the Attorney General to make sure we've done all our steps correctly. That's what I'm mostly concerned about. <laughs> yes. Sure. One of the important next steps is going to be to convince town meeting to be comfortable with this bylaw and vote uh, to support it. Um, I'd, I'd question if people would be willing to let us know how many town meeting members are in presence now. Whoa, great, thank you. Thank you for being a volunteer. I have, I have new appreciation for that. <laughs> okay, thank you. It's very much appreciated. When you get around for the second time, I yeah. <laughs> okay. Other questions, sir. Hi, uh, Bob Kershaw, uh, 32 Copeland Ave. Something you said earlier. I, I want to make sure I understand whether I heard it right or not. Um, did you mean to suggest? So I understand if the local historic district gets is in place, um, they have control over you know the changes, as you made, mentioned earlier, that to the exterior of the building. Were you suggesting that because the demolition order for this building that, that kind of instigated all this is already in place, that it may not apply to that building? Or are you just saying that we can't, we can't, it couldn't affect who owns it as long as they complied with the facade issues? I'm somewhat on the line. It's uh, not, so it's not guaranteed? It's not guaranteed. Town Council is leading us uh, at one particular must, point. Pardon? Certainly this must have come up in other times. There must be some precedence for this, right? Um, not, not that I know of. The, the Dover Amendment has been challenged, but where, it, where you are in the process of, they have a demolition delay, they do not have a demolition permit, okay? Um, is council, their council, our council going to push one way or the other on that? Uh, I, I think it's still somewhat up in the air. My personal interpretation, and it's just me speaking right now, I've certainly not pulled the, the board or anything like that, is they do not have a demolition permit. Well, they don't have it, then if the local historic district goes in, I think it would be substantially harder to get one. Can't say that it's definitely gonna go down that way, but I think it's fair to say town council's gonna have some permit. Does that answer your question, Kai? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Kathy? Sure. Um, we, um, part, I'm in the group, co chair of the group 01867 Neighborhood Preservation as well. Uh, we have counsel, and we've spoken, our counsel has given us an opinion that as long as the demolition permit hasn't been pulled, that if the 
um, historic district rule apply if it's in place before they get their demolition permit, and that the um, and Mass Historical has given us that opinion. And, well, it's not an official opinion, but Mass Historical has said that that is the case as well. So that's our understanding is that it will have an effect. On, on that. Yes, sir. Oh, um, uh, Brandon Murphy, 43 Bond Street. So if I remember correctly. After the say the town council approves the historic district, goes to the AG's office. Is there a timeline? The attorney general's office has to approve. Well, ninety days. Ninety days. Ninety days. Ninety days. Did from I the day it it's submitted. 24th? From timeline? the day it's submitted. From the day it's submitted. Well, they they accept the submitted right in there when it gets. We have to get it out of the town clerk's office with the whole package together, and then it goes to the attorney general's office. I don't know. It's can, can we have a hold until January 24th? For You're absolutely right. We're short on number of days. Okay. So that's three days ago, 90 days, actually. We're short. Yeah. And the general feeling is that may, maybe we'll get through, but uh, okay. we're, we're short. All right. Biting my tongue. <laughs> uh, second round, I guess. Is everybody? Yeah, that's uh, first round here, Mr. This Shields. Is the first round. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> Shields. This is Pete Shields, 31 Randall Road. Uh, I'm concerned about the AG being involved. I, first of all, I don't get a warm feeling anything they do. And secondly, if there are no restrictions to be applied, uh, how come they're looking at it at all? And then uh, the next step would be. If the owner says, well, the hell with you, I'm going to do it anyway, uh, what's to stop them? A permit, maybe, to do the work? Or uh, if the permit's denied, how would they defend denying it? Go. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the AG being involved is the AG being involved by the law, by the procedures uh, the attorney that's that's the way it's drawn up that's the way all, the and all the town meeting all uh, actions have to be approved by the attorney general yeah well this is post uh, passage no, not a, yeah not post passage what happens when the permits design are denied downstream well if they're denied if Well, if you get a, if you get a local historic district in, our bylaw under the 7.3 general bylaw for the town of Reading has a right to us to accept or not accept demolition of a building. If we disapprove that demolition, it goes down the chain of command that they don't have an, a um, certificate of appropriateness or any other certificate that would allow that to happen. It's just plain rotten denied. It stops. It's, well, it should stop, let's put it that way. Uh, okay. I don't know if I can answer that any other way other than get two lawyers and let them fight it out, you know? Uh, first time, still. Jan Gerdaro, 75 Pine Street. Uh, they'll say the permit uh, is denied, so they can't demolish. But then Criterion still had the option to go in and work within the framework of the house, and we had no way to stop that. Um, no. Don't get into specifics. Yeah. It's really tough to get into the, the specifics of it, but basically we don't deal with the use inside of the building. Um, the just the outside. Okay. Uh, and building of addition more than 25%. That may affect them. Okay. Um, again, we're about instituting the bylaw. We've been very careful to be very appreciative of the people who've helped us get to this point. And thank you, thank you, thank you. But we can only do what we can do also. And right now, we're asking for everybody's support to ask that town meeting members to pass this because we think it's the best support 
that we can get at this particular point. <coughs> Using government to get to where we get. That's okay. Other first time questions? Yes. This is all. 247. Do you just have oversight over the dwellings and the structures, or do you also have oversight over the property, for example, the amount of parking spaces in their cabin that would go over it? <coughs> We have minimal oversight over the actual ground, I, I would call it. We have a driveway. Now, when you turn that into a parking lot, that becomes a different ball game. Um, we might have jurisdiction over that. Um, by our own bylaw, 7.3, we don't deal with shrubbery, trees, you know. <laughs> um, we deal with the building, okay? And that's a big, big, big chunk of it. And it, in some ways, probably controls some of the use of the building, but that's never been our intent. Our never in, intent has never been to um, embarrassing them in any particular way because it's a good service. I know several people whose families that use that service. It's a good service. We just feel that we want to control the ambiance of that street. We want you people to control the ambiance of that street. That's what we really want. Rachel. Rachel Bellgarten at 285 Summer Avenue. Um, I support the historic district, even though I don't live in it. Uh, within two blocks of our house, in any direction, there are seven properties that are large, like this property, with, that were double lots at one time. And I would just hate to see somebody get their shoe in the door and have seven other incidents like this come up really mm -hmm. fast and with us heart. Thank you. Now the first time. Yes, sir. Yep, Frank Kakaudo, 195 Summer Ave. My only comment is I uh, fully support putting this uh, district in. I live in the middle of it. It's certainly not perfect over there now. There's a lot of traffic issues. Um, I know with the Doberman, you can't look at it, but practically, let me tell you, Summer Ave is a skinny road. Um, barely two paths can get by. If there's a vent at either the Middle school now, or the church, is it's very hard to get down the street. And this is just going to exacerbate that even more. So I'm fully supportive. I know there are other members here, and I think it's a good time we all speak up and let the selectmen and the uh, town meeting members know that we're for this. Yes. Um, I'm Kelly Corwin. I live next to Frank at 199 Summer Avenue. <coughs> Excuse me, for about eight years. And I'm very excited um, about you guys taking on this project because we bought a historic home with one of the pictures up there. Um, we love historic homes and we want uh, the beginning of summer out to be preserved. And we also look to you guys as a resource in helping all of us continue to steward the homes that we live in so that we can keep them in a historic character and continue to keep them modern and keep them in good repair. So thank you. Thank you. Summer Ave, I support her. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. David Goplin, 189 Summer Ave. We moved there not only to be close to Frank, but because we really love the neighborhood. We love the house. We moved there three years ago. We invested in the house, continue to really enjoy the area very much. We hope to keep it near at its current state. Yes, ma'am. Model Club 172 Summer Ave, and I, I, would, I don't have a question. I'm just, I would just like to ask if it would be okay if those of us that are going to live in the proposed district could just stand up and thank everybody for showing up tonight because I'm, I'm very grateful that so many of you have come to show your support for what we're trying to do. So if all of those that are going to be in the new district would just stand up. Here, Hi, Ann Gordon, 189 Summer Ave. I also think as citizens of this town and as stewards of these homes, we have an obligation to try to protect them. And I also, um, I'm quoting this from an article I read, but um, these commercial businesses that try to shoehorn themselves into um, um, a, under the Dover Amendment, which is an antiquated law, mm -hmm. is um, absurd. And that we have to take a stance to protect this town. And 
the many neighborhoods that we all love. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Um, Rebecca Lieberman, 50 Pratt Street. And I just wanted to say that I fully support the historic district. That said, I was wondering if there's anything else we can do, any kind of enticements to the developer to maybe um, consider other locations, sort of a carrot approach instead of a stick. Just a thought. Maybe that's outside the scope of this meeting, but. It's outside, of, it's outside the scope of what the West Street Historic District can do, I think, but I think you could probably see several people in the, the room that um, would be involved in such activities. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Melissa Mendez, 149 Summer Ave. My husband, John, and I support uh, the Historic District and thank your committee for all your hard work as well as the 0867 Neighborhood Preservation Team who's been working tirelessly. Um, I want to echo what this gentleman said about the extreme traffic, especially when there's Parker events and Unitarian events. We live towards Wisteria Lodge, the other end of it, the King and Summer Ave corner. And anytime there's anything, soccer, concerts, etc., cetera, uh, to get by with parking on both sides is, is very dangerous. And, and a big concern that I have is just the additional traffic that's going to be coming and going at all hours because we don't yet have a sense of the time of day that these services will be provided and how that traffic is going to make it even more dangerous for children and adults alike. So again, thank you for all the efforts that, that you put forth as well as those in the 0867 Neighborhood Protection or Preservation Committee. Thank you and you're welcome. Will? Yeah, Will Finch, 51 Mill Street, town meeting member. Um, back in 1995, we purchased the Jeremiah Nichols Tavern on Mill Street. Um, that house came very close to being demolished by the developer, um, and, but was saved by some very stern words from the then town planner. Um, and I think the town has continued to be concerned about the historic nature um, here. And I hope that the selectmen, as well as all the other town bodies, will continue that, that effort. Um, my other comment is that I've seen your advertising signs all over town in front of all styles of houses. Um, so it really looks like a, a broad-based support. And I hope we can translate that into passage at town meeting. Thank you. Jonathan. Uh, still Jonathan Lawrence, not 41 Travis. <laughs> um, and the longer I waited, I guess the more comments I had, which may be a bad thing. But um, just on many different levels, um, I, I support the, um, the, this effort to create um, this historic district, um, not necessarily weighing in one way or the other on the particular project uh, that I know is near and dear to a lot of folks. Um, minds and hearts here. Uh, I'm also on the Historical Commission, and um, I need to, to deal with my responsibilities on that. Um, but I, I do just want to say, in terms of uh, a supporter not only of the historic, of the generation of historic districts, um, and the democratic process, and I'm also a town meeting member, and I'm, I'm glad to see there's a lot of town meeting members here tonight. Um, this will be the subject of the town meeting, which starts on November 10th, and I, it goes that Monday, and if it's continued, and it likely will be, because there are a significant number of uh, zoning bylaw changes that are on as well, which numerically are ahead of this, so I don't know where it's going to be, but the thing that I wanted to say is um, those people who are, have an interest in this um, article and the establishment of this historic district um, it's great that everybody has their support, um, and they're showing it here tonight. Uh, and also, if this is on cable television, I would direct this to anybody who might be watching now or in the future before a town meeting. Um, in terms of exercising uh, our responsibilities as citizens, it would probably be helpful, and I think you said it, Angela might have said it as well, um, people should call and contact their town meeting representatives Anybody who is a town meeting member um, is there to represent everybody in their precincts and everybody in all of the precincts. Um, and, and I can't tell you how many times it comes up as to who have we heard from and, and what have they said. Um, we all vote our own conscience, but we also 
our representatives, the people in our precincts. And if you have strong feelings one way or the other on this, and I know everybody has strong feelings in a particular direction on this, definitely contact your town meeting members before November 10th and let them know. I would also say uh, there is nothing that precludes people who are not town meeting members from attending town meeting. Um, they, they don't necessarily get to speak um, and they don't sit with town meeting members, but it's, a, it's at the high school uh, auditorium. They can attend and they can watch. You um, can also do it at home, but you can ask a town meeting member um, if you want to speak after town meeting members have spoken, and maybe this is something that's contemplated by any of the groups that are already, uh, by you folks, or by Olin 867, or any other interested group, but folks should also attend uh, the town meeting and express um, if they get the opportunity, and you certainly will um, come to me, if nobody else, um, to speak after town meeting and express your point of view. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say is, um, as a member of the Historical Commission, I know, as you had said, and I know it's the case, that this was generated largely by the, the current initiative on Summer Ave, um, that the, the process of designating historic districts um, is not specifically, in my mind, and I'm just speaking my mind here, um, is not specifically or solely for the purpose of protecting a particular house. It's for protecting the value and the integrity of our town. Um, and it's much bigger than this single issue. And I, I have been on the, on the Planning Commission, I've been a, um, a strong adherent of the character and identity of this town. Um, we have, I'm, I've learned, 370 years of, of history. Um, and uh, the, the, the effort to maintain and preserve uh, our history is what is at stake here. Um, and that's the case in this particular district. That's the case, a proposed district. That's the case in West Street uh, Historical District. And I wholly endorse looking at any other areas that have the same need or historical value um, that we as a town should continue to have an interest in preserving our historical and architectural character um, and history and integrity going forward um, after this. Um, I guess that's all I can say now. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, just a comment in relationship to that. Um, I hear it. And I was asked that the other night when I was at the uh, bylaw committee meeting that there is a strong possibility that Article 9, which is the article that the historic West Street Historic District is proposing, will be moved to the first night of November 10th. Okay. Um, most of the zoning, I believe, is going to be on um, Thursday, and therefore it probably will not occur on Thursday. So if it goes over on 10, it will go to the next Monday, I think. That's what I'm thinking right now, but I hear lots of things, and sometimes you hear so many things you don't know what to believe after a little while. But um, that seems to be the general remark. How would we know when it's going to be? Probably be in the paper, watch TV. <laughs> you know, Call it should be clerk. running. Call the town clerk. Yeah, town clerk. And they have to know. What was yeah. the question? Sorry. Which How would they know? How would they know? Town clerk will know. Would they know? Town clerk will know. Okay. <laughs> It gets moved. Okay. Um, uh, Camille. Camille. Sorry. <laughs> I know the name. I just... I, I'm, I've been sitting here because it's really bothering me, and I, I'm not sure how I want to put this all together, but um, the attorney, the town attorney, I'm going, all right, who's going to give the town attorney marching orders? For one thing, they have to follow the law. That's fine. But just from, from being on the Board of Selectmen, the, the Board of Selectmen usually is giving the town attorney their feelings. Planning Board is giving their, their feelings to the attorney as to what we're looking for. And I'm just wondering who's going to be giving the town attorney what this community wants. Because I don't know where the Board of Selectmen is on this. And I don't know if, if they're going to take a position, but if, if we can get, I haven't seen a public meeting like this in, I, I can't tell you how many years. 
But what I'm saying is I'm very concerned about the town attorney and what are the marching orders for them and how is that going to impact the decision. Because town meeting can pass this, this district, which is wonderful, we need the district. But that's not the end of the story. And I'm concerned about the end of the story for 186. So I think you people need to talk to your selectmen. You, you need to talk to your neighbor. You need to talk to the people across town to call the selectmen. Um, because we need to garner support that this is community wide and the community wants this protection of this property. Selectman Ensminger. Dan Ensminger, Secretary of the Board of Selectmen. We do have a forum here this evening. Uh, we're not issuing any marching orders to town council. He's taking a dispassionate look at this, as far as I know. And we'd be very happy to consider taking a position on this at our meeting tomorrow night if uh, you still decide. You would ask us to hold off, I think, maybe until this meeting happened. Uh, I was going to. And I guess you're looking right at me and saying that, and that's directing the chair, I guess. I had concerns because most of the time, votes uh, that come in are usually done by the people that want, have the articles. I have a concern when people step outside that peripheral that they're setting a precedent for other people. Um, you know, there's a reason that they don't display the elections on the East Coast on the west coast before the election hours are closed on the west coast. Um, I, didn't, I didn't want, it's always been right up front. Right up front. Everybody's been very helpful. We know what everybody wants. We know what we want. But we don't want anybody stuffing it down somebody else's face. So not knowing how the selectmen would vote, I thought it was better to have some place along here no consideration at all than to have one that possibly could hurt. I just didn't know where we stood. And that's, OK. Well, I, I can't say I pulled the board, but uh, I'm not seeing any uh, very sad faces on the three members here tonight. <laughs> well, maybe you all can vote. Tell them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, my name is John Halsey. I live at 75 Beaver Road. Selectman. And we were asked by um, some people in this room to take a position at our last meeting. And we, we didn't for a reason. And that is that the people in the town elect us to represent them. And without hearing from the public in a public hearing, and so we scheduled a selectman's meeting following tonight so that we could be here tonight to hear what people had to say for and against. I mean, that just seemed to make sense and it seemed to match with the thoughts that you had as well. So, you know, nobody's, nobody's hiding out. I mean, you know, we're here and we didn't take a position before because it would have been an, an uninformed position. And, you know, tonight we have the benefit of, the, of a public hearing and we actually have a quorum of the selectmen here so that we could hear it and take it up tomorrow night. So, uh, you know, uh, to Camille's point, uh, you know, it's, it is appropriate um, to take it up because we've been asked by a number of members to do it, but now that we have more public information, that's what the public hearing process is all about. You know, it gives, you know, people who vote, whether they vote as a selectman or they vote as a town meeting member on behalf of the citizenry that they hear from Public. So I, I just think this is a highly appropriate evening for us to hear everything that everybody has to say and um, and then you know, take it up tomorrow. Fine, I release my anxieties. <laughs> <laughs> May I make another comment on behalf of um, the 01867 group just to clarify um, what Selectman Halsey said that when we were at their last meeting, uh, we weren't so much asking them to take a position, but if they were going to take a position. <laughs> 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 we 
moving target. I think it was just a semantical thing. <laughs> Gina. Gina Snyder, um, Jane of Terrace. I live in Precinct 5, and just to follow up on the selectmen, I'm here because I wanted to hear, uh, some people might not know what precinct they're in, but Precinct 4 and 5 split summer, east and west, so half of the district is in my precinct. I'm a town meeting member. I wanted to hear it from you uh, to inform my vote at town meeting. So. Thanks for, uh, particularly the person who asked people to stand up, because now I know there's yeah. quite a lot of people who, uh, who really are, are for it, right, who live right there. Right here. Here. Stephen Cool, 107 Prospect. I'd just like to get to the bottom line. If the historic district is enacted, if everything that we are looking for happens in terms of establishing the district, it is my understanding from your visuals and presentation and answers to questions that they can still buy the house, they can still utilize it for their business purposes, uh, they, can, uh, they can modify up to 25% of the portion of the house visible from the street, they can remove the plantings, they can uh, pave all or most of the property, they can uh, remodel it inside obviously, uh, they can put up signage, I, I would suppose. I, am I missing anything? Uh, I would question the paving of the entire property because I think our bylaw reads, I'm coming out of the driveway, I think when we go to a parking lot, I think I get a little bit difficult, you know, so you know really depending on how big the parking is. The only fluid thing might be the parking issue. Well, just a concern, uh, the 25% only pertains to um, uh, structures that are less than 70 years old. So right. that's one oh, section okay. that only apply. That's part of the reason we have a commission with five people on it. The bylaw isn't huge, but basically there's a lot of um, sections. dealing, sections okay. dealing, and what rides first, what rides second. And yeah. so it, it does okay. get, but not complicated, could, but tough. They could make drastic changes to portions of the building that really aren't visible from the street. There's very little that's not visible from the street. <laughs> There's a wide open lot there, and basically you've got the very back of the buildings, the yeah. two buildings. There's two structures on that property. There's a barn yeah. that's on the National Historic Register, and there's a house that's on the National Historic Register. So it's, it. uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, in Canadian Temple Street, and I just would like to add to your list um, of lighting the property, and then especially the daylight saving time at 4 o'clock when it gets dark with the business and operation. Did you say lighting? Lighting. 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 Oh. Yeah. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Every, yeah. Just a, for a point, I guess for clarification, my understanding is that um, separate from the Historical District Commission uh, and specific to this particular project of Criterion 186, um, the, if they are uh, exempt from zoning uh, under the uh, Dover Amendment law. Certainly my, limited slight review. Yeah, my understanding was that that didn't necessarily mean they could do whatever they wanted. That's right. I, my understanding was that they still would have to go before the CPDC for limited review and uh, so I, I'm just asking if you or anybody can confirm that I I, they, I, that, I believe it's limited so review. what I wanted to ask about that was it, even if they would have to go before the historic district commission um, relative to the uh, elements that are under the purview of the historic commission, district commission would they not still have to go before the CPDC and I think folks ought to know that for very limited purposes with respect to traffic and lighting and noise and things like that. So there would be some degree of process um, that they would be held accountable to, not just before the Historic District Commission, but also before the CPDC. Yes. They still have to meet with all the other, what is it, the DRT and... Yeah, the design review team, right. And all that sort of thing, which they have already done. My feeling is that's still not concrete, you know, that they can change their mind. Um, we need to have things in place to help them make sure <laughs> that happens. Yes, ma'am.
And there are some openings in, in precinct two. If you know anyone, you can recommend that they uh, come to that to our pre-meeting. But I, um, what Rachel said raised some concerns for me because let's say this gets taken care of and, and summer apps it remains the way we want. And if everyone here is concerned about the historical character and integrity of our community. But what Rachel said, what if this developer then decides to go to another area of town or goes to some of those double lots? What is, is there anything that we can do to counteract the antiquated Dover Amendment? And have we been, I, I, I don't know about if the 01867 Preservation Committee has been working with Brad Jones and Jim Dwyer at the state level. Is there anything that we can do at the state level so that this doesn't happen in another neighborhood? Big, big, the Dover Amendment has been challenged, I understand. I don't know if it's been challenged on these things, so you're talking a lot of time. Obviously a large expense. I don't know who's gonna pick that up. I do think that there are other properties in town that are, and I don't know who and how, and how you'd write it so you cover what you want, but don't overburden everybody, you know? Um, I just think that's, those are huge questions you're asking. We don't have all the answers yet. Representatives from Jones's office and Wire's office and Senator Jason Lewis himself came to our previous meeting and told me that we had an So they're aware of what's happening and they're also aware that you know this similar um, things have happened to many communities throughout the state. The, the, law, the amendment was enacted in 1950, amended once in the 1970s, and, and otherwise it stayed the same. So, um, there may be some interest after this is over if people have energy to, to um, you know, do something in that regard. Also, um, the uh, <clears throat> legal counsel hired by the 0867 group will be offering an opinion um, that will be available to everyone to read on his opinion as to whether Criterion should receive Dover Amendment protection. And um, after that, the um, town council will provide his opinion. And, you know, he will have heard from ours, but he will definitely make his own opinion, so we await that also, which will come. Right now, the design review team did meet last week, and there will be, um, according to the minutes of that meeting, there will be a limited site plan review meeting scheduled with the EPDC in December for this property. And that's when the formal application, they have a lot of elements they haven't addressed even on the plan they submitted to the town already. Um, so they've raised some questions, they have to address those. Uh, but the limited site plan review is rather limited, it doesn't even deal with traffic. They will not be required to do a traffic study. Despite the fact that the owner of the business was quoted in the Chronicle as saying that they expect, they would like to serve thousands of families. So they have some rather large plans for that site. And I think that's something that we have to be really concerned about, given how much of um, um, our neighborhood already bears in terms of Parker, Barrows, Eden, Sawyer, and the Unitarian Church. We bear a lot of traffic for the community. So, um, thank you. Thank you. Other comments, questions? Yes, okay. Kathy. Do we, so they haven't officially purchased the property? No, they have a purchase and sale agreement. And Uh, we know very little about that. Okay. I'm sure there's a lot of pending, 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 pending. This is, I hope you realize how this is, our piece is the local historic district. There are a lot of other dominoes here and a lot of other pieces and they're big pieces. Um, so we're still working. Yes, ma'am. Um, Linda Snow Doxer, Precinct 1. Um, first, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity. I am a town meeting member and I came to learn more. And what I've heard is really level-headed conversation with a lot of information, some of which I really didn't know before, so I want to thank you. And recommend that that's how you approach it on town meeting floor as well, because I think information is the best vehicle for support. As we have our concerns uh, <coughs> assuaged, then we can become more supportive of the Historic Commission in this. My concern that I came in with was beyond this particular business, coming into this particular site, it was about what happens when the Historic Commission takes over an area and the 
hardship that is, or the challenges that then arise for the homeowners in that area. And one of them, the concerns that I had, you already answered, and I understand it, is no oversight on the inside of the dwelling. So if someone wants to do something in the inside, then they are perfectly free to do whatever they want. Build an inspector. Build an inspector. <laughs> Build an inspector. <laughs> And that's there anyway, so. Right. The other question that I had was about um, environmentally friendly alterations to dwellings. Um, and you mentioned windows and mentioned them in a way that led me to think that changing windows are, is an issue. Is it just the appearance that there might be environmentally friendly windows or solar aspects, roofing, you know, that's well, the discussion windows are one of those things that change and uh, have changed a lot in the last 20 years, 25 years, uh, with the solar, two glazed windows. Um, yes, there's a lot of discussion about it, but there are a lot of options too. Um, wood exterior, vinyl exterior, metal exterior, wood interior. Where the, where the grills are located, on the inside, outside, and in the middle, you know. So a lot of those things give the proper ambiance of the house. So with proper discussion and understanding, sometimes the, the commission can deal with that. I don't think there's, <clears throat> I never have heard it on any commission, but you have to rebuild period houses, you have to go find the windows that are of that period, they have to be, you know, that's not the way we're, it can't be, it just can't be. It's. Uh, Unfortunately, it's a real world, you know. And uh, other environmental issues like solar is, is in. We, we have very little control over that. Uh, we've negotiated to some extent when somebody's wanted to put an air conditioner, they can't put that big central air conditioner on the front lawn, you know. Um, it's got to go in the back of the house, or it's got to be. And that public right away is a big issue, especially if you're like, um, I think it's 83. Um, the double doored brown house on the corner of County and West Street. Um, they don't have much backyard that's not visible from a public right of way. And then you got County Road. Is that really a public way? Well, yeah, it is a public way. It's, it's privately paid to plow and stuff like that, I guess. Um, there are, so it's a mixing of a lot of issues. And that's, I think, what makes the commission so unique and so great um, that you, you have a lot of variety and a lot of room to work. Okay? I hope that answers the question to some extent. Yes, sir. Tom Barr, uh, 22 Garrett Road, and a uh, town meeting member in the 6th Precinct. I've unfortunately been out of town a good part of the last uh, three months, so I haven't been as aware of all the things going on as I should be. But nonetheless, when in town, I've tried to make a point of talking with neighbors, getting a sense of what the, uh, the feeling in the precinct is. And I heard a few viewpoints that are in pretty much conflict with my understanding of the project and, and the proposed buyer's uh, intent. Uh, specifically, it was my understanding that uh, he was intending to use this to uh, basically as an operation for his consultants to go out to, to the homes of uh, kids that were being covered under the federal programs uh, not older than kids not older than three years old. Uh, what I'm hearing from neighbors is that no, this is, uh, this is our uh, pre-K uh, school in this, in this building. And I was quite sure that that's not the case. Nonetheless, that is the viewpoint held by a good number of neighbors in our area who uh, at the moment are kind of against the project. Um, so I'm wondering how much disinformation there may be out there. I haven't been here to see the Chronicle or anything else. Uh, I don't know what has been made readily available to the voters. But, um, I guess I have a question for you. When you said the project, do you mean the project of making a local historic district or the project no. of criteria? <coughs> yeah, okay. And um, as an offshoot of that, um, I understand that uh, Criterion Donor also has a, a lot of other for-profit businesses. And there's been uh, talk about after he is able to move in there, if, if that happens, and establish his non-profit business there, that there's really nothing to keep him from moving in his profit-making operations into the same uh, facility. And I'm 
just looking for information and uh, a little clarification. I'd like to be able to uh, go back to the people I've spoken with uh, with some solid information. Um, from this board, we have not received any of that information that you're asking for, and I would classify it anything you all probably have is hearsay because basically we don't think they presented that out into the real world that we know of at this point. Um, I, I think it's important. I would urge people to go to town meeting because as Jonathan said, even if you are not able to vote, you generally, if you're involved with it, you'll be recognized and be able to speak and just as with discussions that are going on here, you'll probably be urged also to stick to the parameters of it. So questions about criterion, while they should be addressed to 01867, should probably not be brought up at town meeting because what is being done by the West Side Historic District really needs to stand alone um, irrespective of what other project is going on. So I think that that's an important thing to keep in mind, that when you're talking about this, if you go to the selectmen's meeting if you, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, public comment, um, if you go there or if you want to speak at town meeting, that you really stick to the parameters of the warrant article and not bring criterion into the discussion. I think, again, I will reinforce that we've tried very hard to keep each person and each personality out of it, we're dealing with the district and the buildings. Uh, I do think that a lot more can get affected by it, but we're not, we can't deal with that directly in any way, shape, or form. It's just not right for us. And there are openings called the town clerk's office. Um, there are, I think there's two and eight, there are a couple of openings on town right. meetings. So two thirds is a high threshold to me, so every vote counts. So if you know someone in an opening, in a district with an opening, urge them to become a town meeting member. Is it oh. two thirds of attendees, or is it two thirds of total? Two thirds of the, of the quorum. Two thirds of who's ever there. Attendees. They, they attendees. need to have a quorum. I understand. So. Two thirds of attending. attendees. The, the town clerk will know what districts and will be able to tell you how to get to the meetings you'll be appointed at previous to the first town meeting. Everybody said, enough said. We, we thank you for your input. We thank you for um, supporting us. Um, I personally would like to thank the board up here um, for their work. Kim Saunders for taking the notes. She's just been super for us. Uh, we get the support as a small group out of town hall, and we actually have a secretary. It's pretty awesome. Uh, and I thank my wife, my wife for setting up the uh, PowerPoint presentation and being my number one driver. <laughs> and I do thank all those people. I know 08867 has been mentioned several times tonight. And they have basically been a good section of the driving force, if not a bigger section than you can imagine. Because it's tough under town meeting, excuse me, under town rules, every rule is a little different when you have a four day work week and you have to post it two days in advance and all those things affect it. And it gets much harder to drive the town truck. <laughs> okay? Uh, I do thank you very much for coming and throwing all your support. and. Uh, Contact your town meeting members. <laughs> Tell them what to do. They're yours. Thank you very much.